One Circuit Mailbag, coming to you live from downtown Tasmania. One Circuit, we're very irresponsible with our late night shopping. Oh, this has actually got something written on it. 100 pieces A03400. Ah, uh, yes, because recently I've uh, been playing around with the A03400. It's an N channel MOSFET. Um, so I'll put the video up here, a recent video. Um, you may have seen that one. And it uh, it is, I guess its main thing is that it seems to be able to handle a lot of current and a decent amount of voltage as well. It's a bit small. Uh, it is a SOT 23 jobby. Uh, but uh, another thing in its favor is the low gate uh, to threshold or gate threshold voltage, which is around about, from memory, around about 1 or 1.1 volts. So very good for logic level stuff, particularly when you're dealing with the ESP8266 or the ESP32 or similar. So not much voltage opens this one right up. There's 100 pieces for probably not much. Um, one of the comments on the original video was that uh, some guy snagged 3,000 of them a few years ago. Um, so happy days. Um, yeah, not sure my budget runs to 3,000, but 100... Yeah, that should be able to do that. Nice little transistor, that one. Hmm, so be a bit careful with this one, I think. I can feel something in there. I don't want to cut too deep. Let's just see if we can sneak into the packet a little bit. Oh, okay. Five pieces, CH32X035. So uh, risk five, it says it's a core board. I wonder if it's a module or the actual chip. It is a module, fantastic. So that's good for experimentation. Um, oh, look at that little tiny guy. Let's get in a little bit closer on it and have a wee look. Oh, and it's USB-C too on the end. Nice, let's get close. All right, so there's our chip, WCHX035F8. And um, I, I don't know about the 12, oh, having trouble focusing. I don't know what the 12D52 is, but I put the specs up on the side anyway, so you can have a look. Uh, and this is the development board. They, they, these are pretty cheap these days, actually. So uh, no excuse not to go out and snag one and have a bit of a play. Uh, this is the USB-C version. And obviously then it would have uh, a regulator to drop it down to probably 3.3 volts uh, and some other stuff around here, protection stuff and so forth. A lot of the pins broken out. Um, this kit did come with some header pins as well, which is nice, nice bright yellow ones. Uh, and then also it looks like some communication uh, pins at the back here as well. And a boot uh, button, which is nice. Pretty useful to do your development board on here. Recently, when I did some remapping of the CH32V003, and I'll, I'll put that video up uh, as well if you haven't seen it, but uh, there was a sensible comment on there saying, really, you should do most of your development on these sorts of boards and then just transfer it at the end, which is quite true. Um, I just I was just very deep down a rabbit hole then and couldn't get out uh, until I solved it, so I just kept going. But, um, yeah, these little modules with these new uh, chips, uh, very, very good for doing your development on, and then when you're ready to go into production, happy days, uh, just transfer the code and away you go. Yeah, nice little boards. This would have to be the lightest packet I think I ever got. Crazy light. I wonder what's in there. Let's have a look. Okay, one module it looks like. So day for modules. ESP32S3. But then it says C3. Um, so maybe it's a bag that they put multiple things in. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it says S3 and then it says C3. This says S3 up here though, super mini. Nice, okay. So I don't know, I haven't really got a handle on all the different ESP32 variants at this stage. But uh, when I see a new one, I think, oh, I'll have a look at that. I don't know why. Um, really, the development work that I have done has been mostly on the dual core. So I've tried to focus on dual core chips. 
Look at the size of it though. I mean, it's just insane. These are one centimeter uh, grids here. And so this is, what is it? Uh, not even two centimeters by not even two and a half centimeters. Just insane. Enough pins broken out that um, that you can do some useful stuff. Let's get right in close and have a, a good look at it. Um, but yeah, sensational. USB-C, beautiful. Let's get right in. Yep, definitely says ESP32-S3. Um, I might do a, you know, what do you call it, AI, like ChatGPT or whatever, Gemini um, comparison between all of them because I'm lazy. Last time I did that, it went spectacularly wrong because the AI got it very wrong. So we'll see how we go, but um, I'm reasonably sure that the S3 is a dual core version. And uh, if you've been following the channel for a while, you know that I've got a project where you uh, do updates of firmware over the air, and it's nice to have two cores for that. One core to sort of look up uh, to look out for the updates, and one to do the actual work of the project. Um, so I'll link that video up um, in case you're interested. But uh, look at the size of it. And I do have something in mind for this one, actually. Um, I've got, uh, I, you probably, you might remember a video I did where I repaired a clock for a toddler. And the clock was the sort of thing that turns a different color when you're supposed to get out of bed um, and or, you know, stay, stay in bed. So it's sort of like toddler training. Um, the toddler uh, broke it. I fixed it. They broke it again. It's unfixable because the LCD display has been um, compromised, let's say. Um, and so I thought I might make one. I thought I might make one that um, uses one of the newfangled sort of round TFT displays, um, maybe, uh, so that um, you could sort of log into this as well and change the times. Might be a bit of fun to do that. So um, that's that's probably what this one will be useful. And you certainly don't need that many pins broken out to do something. Well, at least I assume so, to do something like that. So, yeah, a little bit of uh, exploration work to do on that project. But um, look at the size of that. That is sensational. I can't remember what that cost, but I'll, I'll put that up on the screen. But that is a, uh, that's a nice bit of kit. Looks like it's got a reset and a boot as well for flashing. So, yeah, very, very nice. Um, it's just amazing how far this has come. I was just thinking about that last module the wch module i mean that's very pro mini but the comparison between the pro mini and uh and the old risk five chip is um yeah very interesting and certainly doesn't favor the pro mini uh only thing is of course is that uh, some of the older chips and i guess you could put the esp32 into that category now have a lot of projects that have been written for them a uh, good community out there whereas the uh you know the cutting edge stuff is uh, is still developing it'll get there but the specs on these guys for the size is just sensational. Unbelievable time to be alive. Yes, I know it's already been opened, but it just piggybacks nicely on the top of the last uh, package, which was the ESP32-S3. This is a TFT display, 1.28 inch TFT LCD displayed module board, blah, blah, blah. Um, so the, yeah, this is the thing I was talking about that maybe might replace the clock only because it is round so if we open this up there we go so that is the display pretty nifty so what have we got down here we've got uh, rst reset cs dc sda scl ground and vcc a little bit of exploring about how to talk to it and um, i'm assuming that uh, there's a bit of code out there because it's been around for a little bit now Lots of frustrated people trying to talk to it, though, on the internet, so it could be an interesting one. Um, all that I really wanted to do, is that 240 by 240, interesting. I just wanted to, uh, I guess, at a bare minimum, display a color and perhaps even a digital time would work. Um, kids these days don't seem to read the analog ones anyway. Uh, it's all digital. So if it could display big enough digital um, numbers so that, we could read the time and then some color associated with it as well. Mm, yeah, so um, very interesting to see how the um, how this pans out. So uh, where's my ESP32? Uh, here it is, I've taped it up. Yep, so these two, uh, maybe side by side, might replace the uh, the broken clock. We'll see. Oh, Mr. Light and Fluffy. Uh, be a little bit careful. Sometimes these aren't as protected as what you would think, although this one looks pretty good. Wow, yeah, nice bit of packaging there. Um, let's keep digging in and see what we do have. 
So we've got a number of packs. Oh, super capacitor. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, very good. So 3.8 volt super capacitor. Look at these little guys. Fantastic. This one says 120 farad. And the idea behind these ones is I'm working furiously in the background, although you wouldn't know it, on uh, replacing the batteries in the candle project with these little guys. Astonishing. Uh, and I'm almost there. I think a video is very imminent. Um, these are sort of similar price these days to the nickel metal hydrides, uh, depending on where you get them from. But the advantage, obviously, of course, is it's not chemical. The charge cycles are very uh, good, you know, in terms of things like, uh, let's get in real close and have a look at those specs. But, um, you know, the number of times you can charge and the speed of the charge. So that's what that is about. If I can get it to sit up and behave itself, maybe if I just put this, there we go. I'll get in real close and we'll have a little look at it. Yeah, here's the little guy close up. Different sort of chemistry involved in this one. Um, you can see the size of it is pretty small. I'm thinking a couple of centimetres uh, this way and a centimetre or so this way, but 120 farad, 3.8 volts. I have a way, I believe, of charging this up just with a little 2-volt um, solar panel So um, and using a charge pump circuit. Um, yeah, so watch out for that video real soon. It's so close now uh, to coming together. And when that one comes together, that will be a significant leap in the candle project. Um, and so light too. So yeah, um, mechanical strength good. Um, no more chemistry uh, or messy uh, liquid chemistry, that is. Um, good charge uh, cycles. And also the number of charge cycles is massively increased. So all the good things about the supercapacitors. And a decent price these days too. I love these little guys. I think it's going to be great. Oh. Bit of a chunky monkey, this one. Um, not too sure what it is, but there's lots of them. Well, ah, okay. There's five of them. Uh, and they're just little breadboards. Um, I think 400 point, 400 tie point. Two power lanes, um, perfect for Arduino prototyping, testing, plastic housing, metal conducting clips. Yeah, so I seem to be always looking for some of these, and I have some that are really abused, if you have a look at this one. Uh, I think this was about doing some extraction with a hot air gun, and uh, yeah, this is a nice reminder that hot air guns can be quite hot. So I keep this one around to remind me of what can go wrong. So that is one abused uh, breadboard but always handy when you're doing project or at least for me is to have a breadboard and all the components in a little plastic container and then when you come to prototype something else you don't have to drag this one out and pull everything off there it's just very handy to have a few in reserve so that's what this is about it's just resupply they're very uh, cheap um, pretty durable component unless you um, yeah you hit them up with a hot air gun so um, yeah five breadboards for the prototyping oh okay uh, electronic digital timer switch socket kitchen timer outlet programmable timing socket control 220 volt EU US UK AU plug color smudge AU plug this one because we're in AU and this is where it's come from uh, so what is this about well is electronics sort of it's more cat related so we've got a very old cat Marvin he's a lovely boy he's I don't know what age he is he's I think 105 in cat years something like that and uh, we have some cold nights here even now that it's I mean it's spring at the moment so you'd think it'd be pretty good but um, was it two nights ago it was two degrees Celsius I don't know what that is in flamingos but um, it's cold two degrees Celsius is, is pretty cold um, and so I've got him a, a mat. It's, um, it's a, a fluffy mat, round guy, coiled with a USB uh, input into it. And so this is part of this sort of little project to make sure that Marvin is nice and warm at night. Um, and so it'll come on at probably, let's say, 8 or 9 o'clock at night and go through to maybe 6 or 7 in the morning. 
um, and you should be able to um, set different times uh, for this and it'll it'll just it just so plugs into the outlet uh, and then I'll put a USB um, AC to DC adapter in here off to the USB uh, heated mat. Marvy's happy. Um, my long time collaborator is happy. Uh, everything's good. Um, yeah, so I'm not really sure about how to. Oh, it's got instructions though. It does have instructions. Uh, so let's see what the instructions say. Instruction manual it says um, adjustable toned power control, randomized power control. Randomized would be interesting for the cat. First time charging. Oh, this timer contains a rechargeable battery. There you go. It's normal that the new old model runs out of battery if it wasn't being charged for a long period of time. In this case, the screen will not turn on. To charge, simply plug the timer into a power outlet and the charging time should be 15 minutes. Uh, and then it's got all the buttons to push and why you should do that to set the clock and then set the timer. Uh, lots of examples, random function. <laughs> Why would you want that? Oh, I know why you'd want that. That's to um, that's to dissuade the crinimals from coming in because if you're out for the evening uh, and the crinimals cruise past and they see lights randomly going on and off, uh, they're not the brightest um, species, the old crinimal, because uh, if they were, they'd be out doing a job, right? I suppose it is a form of a job. But um, yeah, so if you have a dog out there, terrific. If you have lights flashing on and off, terrific. So that's probably what the... The random thing is about is about uh, decriminalising your house, I suppose. Uh, there's some manual controls, some parameters here. Nickel metal hydride battery in there, good to see. Low power consumption, response time one minute. Oh, I, I'm guessing what they mean by that is that you can set it so that it's um, to the nearest minute. Um, and there's got a little Q&A here too. Why won't my timer turn on? Well, it's out of battery, etc., etc. Yeah, so um, I'll give you an update on this when everything's plugged in and uh, take you through the whole setup. But uh, basically, this is about an old cat being warm at night. Isn't that nice? That is the mailbag for the week, and uh, we'll catch you next time. See ya.